Available now. Link below. A startling rebellion at a Utah middle school as students flee their classrooms, not from a fire, not from a drill, but from their peers who have adopted an unusual identity, that of furries, biting and scratching and more bizarre behavior, disrupting the learning process, leaving many to ask, where does the fun end and the chaos begin? So stay with us as we explore the lines between cultural expression and educational integrity in this eye-opening report, and you don't want to miss the final thought. Now, folks, before we dive deeper into today's uproar at Mount Nabu School, here's something to ponder. Imagine if your child's school turned into a zoo without cages. That's the level of chaos that we're seeing akin to a data breach, but in educational form. That is why I trust Virtual Shield. It's like a safety net for your online data, providing military-grade encryption and privacy protection with just two clicks. Thanks to Virtual Shield for supporting our report. So protect your family's online data by visiting hidewithgary.com or clicking the link below to get up to 67% off and a 60-day risk-free trial. Now back to the chaos at Mount Naboo Middle School. The situation escalated when a significant number of students identifying as furries began exhibiting disruptive behavior that many found alarming. Reports from inside the school describe scenes where students dressed in elaborate animal costumes not only distracted others but engaged in physical acts such as biting and scratching. Now, this isn't just about costumes. It's a question of safety and the appropriate boundaries within a school setting. Now, the conflict reached a boiling point when a kitty litter box was installed in one of the girls' restrooms, symbolizing a deeper issue of school policy and students' rights. This action particularly sparked outrage among students and parents who view such accommodations as beyond the pale of acceptable school norms. Now, take a look at the footage that was captured during the protest. It shows students holding signs, their faces marked with frustration and determination as they chant for return to a more traditional educational environment. Let's go to that moment. Somebody was telling me that there were the furries were attacking you guys in class. Is that right? Yes. They bite. They bite kids. They bite ankles. They bite people. They bite. They will bite ankles. How do they bite your ankle? Why would they? Why would they? They walk. They walk on all fours, run down the hall, and bite. They scratch people. They scratch your shoes and then bite you. They scratch people. They bite people. And one kid got bit and then he kicked the furry and then he got suspended. They won't stop biting at us. Yeah. Hmm. It's not fair. We don't, we're not allowed to wear a mask on Halloween, but then they wear masks every day. So you can't wear a mask on Halloween? No, no. no. no we can't wear masks on Halloween, but they can wear masks every day. It's not so are they wearing a mask every day? Yes. 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 But every time they go, they're always just wearing a mask, but the principal finally stood up and banned those stuff. But they, have, but they still wear them every day, yeah, they don't, and, they, and they, they don't get in trouble. They the principal doesn't get to make them get in trouble. Yeah. All, all the principal says is just be kind, be nice, be nice. And then, What's the point of dressing up like a furry? I don't know. They think they're so cool that they want to get a lot of attention. I think they want attention. So people can come at them and just look at them and think that they're so cool. Okay. Also, they attack us. If they buy us, we just... I mean, how else do they attack you guys? They either they bite us, they scratch us, they bark at us. They, 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 they pounce on us. And then they get in trouble. And they run on all yeah, fours and pounce on people. Why are they spraying you with Febreze? Just because they don't. Because we apparently have babies. And there's a rumor that they've been putting litter boxes in the girls' bathroom. I heard that was just a rumor. No, it's, no, it's, no, it's, it's true. true. It's yeah. true. Yeah. Is it something you've seen? Yeah. 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 Okay. So we can't talk or say anything to the furries or even look at them, but they can come look at us and they can say stuff to us and touch us. And they can they don't get in trouble, but we get in trouble. Interesting. That sounds like a double standard to me. Yes. And wait, okay, you guys stay on the sidewalk, trouble. okay? Wait, also, um, we're not allowed to look at them, go near them within like 10, a 10 feet circle. Otherwise, the hey, teachers will come and get mad at us. No. Now, the protest was not just a spontaneous outburst, but a planned response to what many perceive as an administration overly accommodating to the point of compromising the learning environment. 
Online petitions circulating among the community have gathered over a thousand signatures demanding stricter enforcement of the dress code and a reevaluation of what is deemed acceptable behavior in school. School officials, on the other hand, argue that the portrayal of the situation has been exaggerated. Seth Sorensen, a spokesperson for the Nebo School District, emphasized that while there have been some instances of discomfort caused by the furry students, the majority of complaints circulating online do not accurately reflect the reality on campus. He argues that the school is committed to inclusivity and ensuring a safe learning environment for all students, which includes open communication about the dress code and student behavior. Now, parents and educators are divided. Some argue that allowing students to express themselves even in unconventional ways is crucial to fostering a supportive school environment. Others contend that there must be limits, especially when such expressions interfere with the educational process and safety of other students. So the debate is heated with no easy answers, and the balance between individual expression and collective rights within a school environment is a delicate one, and it's complex. As the situation unfolds, it becomes a microcosm of the broader societal debates on freedom, tolerance, and the role of education in shaping our youth. If you got value from this report, tap subscribe. It's time for my final thought. Now, the story from Mount Nabu School isn't just about furries. It's a reflection on our society's struggle with balance. How do we uphold the right to individual expression while ensuring it doesn't infringe on the collective right to safety and quality education? Today's events compel us to confront these questions head-on, demanding thoughtful, not reactive responses. As we ponder this, let's remember that the goal of education is to prepare, not impair, our future generations. Congratulations, you made it to the end of the video. Now keep up your quest for truth with this next news report. And if you found our channel enlightening, join the millions who agree with you. Tap subscribe. Thank you for watching the Next News Network.